It's a really exciting time for HS. And, you know, we talked last time about how we have another agent that was coming online. So secukinumab has been FDA approved for HS. It's our second agent. So we've had adalimumab, which was approved in 2015. Secukinumab has now been formally approved by the FDA as of Halloween, October 31st of 2023. Um, So I, you know, I feel like for my patients, it really has meant that there's another biologic that's much easier to get my hands on. Um, And, you know, when we think about just the dearth of number of FDA approved therapies for HS, when we think about, you know, other chronic inflammatory skin conditions like psoriasis or atopic dermatitis, we know we have a long way to go, but certainly the fact that secukinumab is approved now is a huge deal. And um, looking down towards like later this year, bimikizumab, an IL-17A and F inhibitor, had positive phase three results. Um, And so hopefully later this year, we'll see another FDA approved agent coming online. So it's very exciting times. Adalimumab being the TNF alpha inhibitor class, I think right now we're sort of in an IL-17 class phase. So secukinumab being the IL-17A inhibitor, bimikizumab inhibiting both 17A and 17F cytokines. Um, And bimikizumab actually just had their phase three data published very recently, like a couple of weeks ago in the Lancet. Um, So for interested parties who wanted to take a look at their long-term data, I mean, I think the data looks good. It's showing basically out through week 48, we're seeing um, 70% or more of patients still having high score 50 or 50% reduction in their inflammatory nodules and abscesses with no increase in abscesses or draining tunnels from baseline. It's the primary endpoint that's used in the trials. So we haven't seen actually numbers that high in terms of, you know, longevity and having high score numbers um, of that proportion of patients being able to achieve it. So I think that the data is also sort of showing growth towards a better depth of response and um, high score 75 was also looking good. And we're seeing good high score 75 numbers also for JAK inhibitors, which are also going to be coming online for HS probably in the next, I would say one to two years. Now we have two phase three trials for povorcitinib, um, JAK1 selective inhibitor. That's probably going to wrap up this year, right? And then they'll do data analysis, prepare for submission to the FDA. And then there's also upadacitinib that's in ongoing phase three trials. So I think the top agents we're seeing TNF alpha inhibitors, IL-17 and JAK inhibitors. I just want to see more FDA approval. So we have access for our patients, but certainly um, seeing longevity of response and also better depth of response is also encouraging. There's a difference between, you know, going in and seeing a patient and like counting in each individual nodule or abscess, and then also just asking how the patient is feeling and, you know, how is their pain doing? Is pain improved? Has drainage improved, right? Like the patient reported outcomes and impact on quality of life. And so certainly having um, psychokinemab on the market now has been very helpful, especially some patients let's say they weren't a TNF alpha candidate, right? So they weren't able to get on that biologic for HS and now easy to get their hands on secukinumab. And I have seen decreases in number of flares that patients have, for example, and decrease in severity um, and duration of flare and also improvements in pain, improvements in drainage. I feel like, you know, what we're really hoping for is we'll get to a point where there's a biologic or an agent where I can t- say with confidence to the patient sitting in front of me, like there's like a 99% chance that you're going to have an amazing response and it's going to last for a very long time. And safety profiles, like not a problem to even think about. Um, I don't think we're there yet, um, but certainly having these agents that are targeted um, that where, you know, dermatologists feel very comfortable with IL-17 inhibitors, right? We've used it a lot for psoriasis. Um, and I, so I think that having this class of agents available for HS in a more easily accessible way is, is very important. 